Hello students, uh, you're watching this video about ELR 5.6. Uh, this ELR is all about interpreting heating and cooling curves in terms of energy and temperature. In order to be prepared for this uh, note sheet, you're probably going to want several different colors. Um, please remember that you can stop and rewind anytime you need to in case I'm going too fast. So the important key vocabulary that you're going to need on this, um, there are a few and they're all words that we've heard before. They are melting, freezing, condensing, and boiling. Those are the four phase change uh, phase changes that we spent the most time on in class. And then those phase changes, of course, are talking about moving between solids, liquids, and gases. So those are a lot of vocabulary words, but they, again, are all words that we've used already, and they're going to be part of this ELR. So here's what this ELR is all about. It's really all about this one really important graph, and I want to show you what that graph looks like. So you're going to need to spend about half of your space on your week handout for this graph, and I'll center it here. And on this graph, what you're going to need to do is label the axes with heat energy, on the x-axis, and then on the y-axis we want temperature. And so as you go up that way, temperature is increasing, and as we go up that way, heat energy is increasing. The first thing that you should notice and remember is that heat energy is not the exact same thing as temperature. That's one of the biggest misconceptions. Heat, the amount of energy that you put into something, doesn't always raise the temperature as we've seen from some of our labs. Now we're going to start on this graph down on the low energy, low temperature side. So we're, we're talking about some point that exists right here. And as you, um, as, if we're down on low heat energy, low temperature, we're talking about a solid. And if you remember back to that time where we all simulated uh, a solid in class where I handed out the poker chips, um, as you increase the energy, you can still stay a solid and your temperature is rising. So this was the time when I was handing out poker chips. We were still a solid because we hadn't gained enough energy to break free of our neighbors. Um, but where our temperature was still going up. So I'm going to draw on top of this my representation of a solid. That's all the little molecules all tightly packed together. They're still vibrating. They're still moving because they have some energy, just not enough to break free. Then the interesting part happens. There's a point at which the molecules are vibrating fast enough, their energy is high enough, where they start to have enough energy to finally break free of their neighbors. But this is a point where their temperature stops changing too. We get this flat area on the graph. This is the point where they start melting. They start going from a solid to a liquid. At this point, let me get a different color, this is melting. As we go that way. Eventually all of the um, all of the little particles have broken free of each other and the reason and then what they start doing after that is you keep adding heat energy. Once they're all broken free of each other and they're all a liquid, now they can start increasing in temperature again. So we keep adding heat energy and the temperature keeps going up. This is the phase where we have a liquid. And so a liquid, they're not as compacted. They're much more free to move around, but they're still relatively close together. Then again, there's another point. They eventually hit a point where they finally have enough energy to break free of the liquid phase and really gain a bunch of energy and, and break out into the gas phase. Just like when they melted, at this point, their temperature stops rising. This, of course, is the boiling point. As we go that way. And then eventually all of the molecules have broken free of each other in the liquid phase and they turn into a gas and the temperature can keep rising and rising. And so this is the gas. Much, much more spread out. And I should label these. That's gas, liquid, solid. Now there are a few key points on here that need to be made. Here's the first. If you follow this spot over to the temperature side, and if this had a scale on it, this temperature right there is the melting point slash freezing point. 
because if you think about it, if I were to be removing energy and moving this way on the graph instead, and I started with a liquid when I was taking away energy, it would get colder and colder until it hit this point. And if we're going back the opposite direction, oops, freezing, would be going that way. Similarly with up here, if I start with a gas and remove some of the heat energy, now we're going this way on the graph again. If I'm going down this way, as soon as I hit this spot where all of the gas molecules have lost enough energy, they're going to start condensing and turning back into a liquid. So just at this same point, or at this point where we had a melting and freezing point, up here, if I follow this spot across, this is the freezing slash condensing point. So looking at one of these graphs, you can tell for any given substance, based on just where the flat spots are, you can tell what the temperature is for either boiling or condensing. Oops, I wrote that wrong. Boiling or condensing. And same down here, melting and freezing point. Now there are a few more things to put down before I'm going to set you loose on some practice questions. So at this spot when we are going from a solid to a liquid, the question is, is why doesn't the temperature increase? And here's what I need you to write down. During a phase change, change, when you add energy, that energy it is used to break bonds. So when you add energy to a solid, the energy isn't going nowhere. You're still putting energy in. We're moving along this axis. But the reason why the temperature isn't going up is because that energy that you're putting in is being used to break apart these little molecules from each other until they're all broken apart. Then the, energy can, or then the temperature can keep rising as you add energy. Well, when you're going backwards on this graph, if you're starting with something with a high amount of energy, like a gas, and you start taking away the energy, the reason why condensing is also a flat line is because of this. During a phase change, when you take away energy, um, what's, being, what's happening is you're taking that energy Uh, in order to make bonds. So this one's a little bit harder to conceptualize for me, maybe it is for you too, but if you're going from a gas down to a liquid, the reason why this flat spot happens here, there's no temperature change, is because you're actually taking away the energy from these molecules ability to stay apart. So when you say, alright gas, give me some of your energy, instead of them giving it up from their temperature, they say, all right, well, we're going to come together and form a tighter liquid, and that's where we're going to get the energy from to give it up. Once they're a liquid, same idea. As soon as they start freezing, they give up some of their energy, and they get even closer packed together and get more organized in order to become a solid. On the back of your paper, I need you to fill out the explain part. This is just where you tell me basically what your key points are, what you took away from this. For the apply section, I'm going to post the apply questions online, but they can also be found right here. If you pause the video, you can read through the apply questions here. And then, of course, don't forget to ask a question down at the bottom of the paper, or if you don't have a question about what you've just watched, you can write a test question. Good luck.